What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. This is the Third Person Podcast. My name is Chris, and with me, as always, are my buddies, Jesse and Mike. How's it going? What's up, buddies? Guys, we're going back into the Badlands for discussion time. It's Season 2, Episode 6, Leopard Stalks in Snow. We are yes. going to discuss this, and we're <laughs> disgusted by this episode. No, uh, if you, if you saw the review, we didn't really rate this episode that great i think i rated it the best but you know it was probably the, the middle the, middle of the road you know yeah low point what do we have maybe 10 a, episodes maybe this a little season? less yeah what? we get 10 episodes this season we got four more right so definitely yeah. middle it was the middle of the season middle of the, the middle of the road it's yeah it, go check out that review see what see what we actually reviewed it but for now, we are going to jump into um, uh, what happened in this episode, Mikey. Yes, yes. So we have Sunny and Beiji encounter an unexpected friend, but also an unbeatable enemy from the past. And the widow makes an unholy alliance. Oh, God, this is so dumb. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Unexpected friend? Sunny went out to find him. Okay, okay. Yeah. Unbeatable enemy? He's he's dead. He beat him. Spoiler alert. He beats him. <laughs> like, who writes these? We uh, guys, honestly, we should we should end up right. We we always I th- we're just too lazy. Anyway, yeah. All right, let's um look. We got we got a few let's things right to talk about. It. It's yeah. funny because we didn't all really enjoy this episode as much as usual. Yet we still have a bunch of stuff to talk about. So yeah. let's talk about. Well, let's go real quick. We're gonna do these quick. All right, guys. We're gonna we're gonna bang 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 bang. I'm telling the audience, not you guys. We already discussed this. Let's do Lydia and Quinn. All right, real quick. It opens up. Lydia and her guys are blown blown to smithereens. Quinn's out there with his guys, mopping up. Sees Lydia. Yeah. He brings her in, and I, you know, I'm gonna. I will say, I, I did enjoy this scene. Not only because they actually two of my favorite characters. Even though we don't get to see Lydia a lot, I really like her character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like she's kind of like the anti Cersei. She's calculating and stuff, but she's not. She's not a bad person. She kind of means well, so she's susceptible. She's but susceptible she's definitely and she's definitely susceptible. So yeah. they did not. It was not drawn out. The one thing that I will say about this this show is that they don't draw out these things because sometimes you're like, oh god, now these two are going to talk. With the exception of two people, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah. so anyway, my point is, I, I really enjoyed that they immediately. She was like, I'm gonna. I came here to kill you to avenge my son, and I'm. And he's like, there you go. There you go. Here's the knife. Do it. Stab me. Do it. Come and he's on. like, you're, he goes, you're, you know, Ryder hesitated. Will you? You know. Yeah. And, and she then immediately. Did, and then, yeah. And then she, she, he puts on his his charm and uh, maybe puts that's. Blood in her mouth. Yeah. She go wow that's wow. It. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Pound Hog Day. And Pound Hog Day. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what though? Again, with Quinn, that's classic Quinn. He's he's puts the blood on her. Li- like that's just like classic Quinn. That was great, man. That was great. I so yeah. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the that scene. Uh, very much. Yeah, we'll see where that goes in the future. You know, if they're if they stay together again, or they, you know. Yeah, I don't think they'll stay together, but I think it's just, he's yeah, got her. He's got know. her locked up now. You know, that's like she's little his little, su- little little seduction can go a long way. Yeah, not a lot. Not Stockholm a lot of that. Syndrome. Yeah, not. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the will she though? I don't know. I think she's gonna try and kill I, him still. You think? Maybe she'll, yeah, she'll use it, um, she'll do what she has to do, kind of like Vale, until she has the opportunity to I, I Here's my strike. prediction. Lydia Lydia will strike down Quinn. All right. Wh- whether he dies or not is besides the point. All I right. think she's going to strike She's gonna strike at Quinn and succeed. All right. Uh, is, are we good with them? Yes, sir. Sums them up. Yeah. Real quick, we're going to head over to Tilda in the oh, garden God. with Odessa. Who we Jesse's like to call favorite the whore. part of yeah. the episode. Oh, I'm just so thrilled. Yay. Yeah, we It was could. I mean, it was it was cool that we got at least a little bit of the backstory with with Tilda. We kind of see where she was coming from when Odessa decided, you know, we're not fighting for your mother. Your mother just has us there as poor. She's not your mother, she's your baron, she's yeah. your master. Yeah. And she's like, No, she's my she's she, you know, she's she, my mom. You know, I mean yeah. she's not her real mother, but she basically birthed her into the world in a way that you know because she was yeah. just treated yeah. Yeah, well yeah she wasn't a, she, yeah i thought she said she birthed me yeah meaning meaning f- like figuratively metaphorically i don't think so i we i don't think I thought so. she was her actual child i think so too well I, I i thought that at first i heard that and then and then i thought it was like metaphorically 
I may be wrong because I thought she was like, oh, because I was this, I was being, you know, basically raped every night, and then all of a sudden well, she the, stopped it she for did, me. She didn't know and brought me yeah. into well, this she said world. She was a cog, but we know that you know. Yeah. Eh. Well, anyway, the point is, is that her and, weird. and her, yeah, her friend Odessa, she's trying to convince her of that. She tells a story, and then Mike Mike called so many lines in this in this in this episode, you know. So she decides to stay. So it, it yes. there was there was a dichotomy in this episode where you had some good stuff and then you had some bad stuff and it was like, eh, 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 you know, like I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so then they was a little drawn out. It was a little bit. Out. Yeah, I mean that was a little drawn out. Um, and then they start making out and you know, um, so obviously Odessa's a bad influence on Tilda, and then of course Waldo jerking off in the background and then he in clears the his throat. Yeah. What you doing over there in the bushes, you son of a bitch? Son of a <laughs> dumb son of a b b b b bitch. Uh, <laughs> hey, you get the fuck out of my bushes. What are you doing over there, man? <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> so, <laughs> but right after that, right after that, considering we're on that scene anyway, right after that, they bring some more refugees in. And it turns out uh, Val, who, who was running through the forest, was kind of picked up by some of the um the widows i guess scouts or someone who gets these people well she had the armadillo she had the armadillo uh, branded on her hand yeah but i think so maybe she was a slave like a slave to them she was a runaway yeah so she was yeah yeah, and then she was she i guess works for the widow finding these people so that so veil shows up which we'll get we'll get to veil the widow um momentarily um but yeah so that's really it with tilda it's just you know it's i guess i guess it's something to something of note then we go to MK. Let's run over to MK real quick, and he ends up meeting. Can up I run over him in a truck? You can run over him in your cup, your truck, and your cup. Apparently, if it's big enough. <laughs> I I say what I said earlier about the two characters, just where it's drawn out, and it's just, Ava and MK. You know, she ends up saving his life. Um, he's caught stealing a carrot, and she saved this. You know, saved your life, and then. They end up they end up running away and, and they're hiding in this winter wonderland area hotel or something well, yeah, yeah it was a motel time. or a hotel right? yeah it was like yeah it was a mo- yeah and um hotel you know, motel and they both have a good cry together you know he explains that he killed his mom and she's like I have no master and we were like we don't give a shit can you just I don't know why we don't care about these these two people because I just I okay MK I care about a little bit. Ava, I'm nah. interested in him. I just... Yeah, we didn't get we didn't get too much of of, of Ava, but of course MK is going to be like the golden child of the show. You know, I think I think um, a part of let, well we, let's let's get into this quick with MK. The fact that he got cut from the guy that he was stealing the carrot from, and he didn't change. He lost his so, power. So he lost his power. Now, do we know exactly why? No. The when the hell did he lose his power? Away? I know they didn't show us that. Theorizing something here. When he was fighting himself in mm-hmm. the previous episode, right? Uh, when he found out he killed his mother, uh, maybe he's either a suppressing himself from accessing the power, or b the power within has withdrawn itself from him and said, "Nah, I'm going to take over when I want to take over." I well, think he said he said it to Sonny when they were, you know, not you know. He, he just said, said it doesn't s- work. He says I don't have it anymore, or something like that, or it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work. Doesn't work so, anymore. Yeah. So but that's I think something that he doesn't realize he has the ability to do if he does, if he is suppressing it. So I think I think that. he's suppressing. I, I agree. I, I don't yeah. think he's that consciously sentiment. suppressing it. I think it's no, no, know, not consciously. I think trauma. he's. I think he's messed up in the head, that and makes I think sense. Yeah, I, I think I, yeah. I, yeah. more trauma. Sooner or later, it's going to come back. Um, I can agree with that. We 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 did get to see a bunch of cool things and. It was mostly in this yeah. in this section of the the show, this episode, and um, we got to see the Abbots again. Obviously, they were hunting them down. They were using what seemed like a Geiger counter to to, yeah. to chase them. Which I have a quick theory about that. I'll tell you in a second. But we also got to see the past, more of the past. We got to see a couple of magazines. One Beijing was looking at like a, uh, a, a, a what do they call that? Like a rag, Sports right? Illustrated, like, yeah, something like well, that. a little more than there. It was like a lingerie, not lingerie. Yeah. It wasn't a, a Sears like, catalog. No, nah, it was more than that. There was like a pinup type situation, right? Might have been because it was a like maxim. I don't know, something yeah. like a Maxim or something, right? And then we got to see the cover of a of a Wired magazine, which is actually pretty mm-hmm. interesting. And then it it showed, um, uh, the the city. Uh, yeah, Azra. 
right? Yeah. That they're yeah. that they're always that ta- like they were talking about. Oh, we also got the book too with Val and the widow earlier in the episode. We got um which I completely forgot that she tried to get her to translate it. Remember yeah. that? No, well well um didn't didn't MK after he stole the book, didn't he have he had he had Vale. Vale said she would translate right. for him because yeah. that's to his lineage. Because remember he had the medallion or whatever right, that he yeah. found himself. So that all traces back. I think that's probably you know, like what Chris was saying earlier too. Is that that's probably the coolest parts that we got, even though we weren't like so fascinated with this episode. We did get a glimpse of of the past of of um uh, you know of where this world is post apocalyptic. What happened? Like getting little bits, little bits of. I mean, we still have and no that, idea. And then but... it's like a real place. Yeah, yeah it's it really so... ties exactly. It's tying it. It's really tying it into our time. Yeah. You know, for a second I thought it meant like Bioshock Infinite or something like that. I saw. And yeah. I was like, oh wait. Bio I tried Space reading Shock. it if it was a game or something, but no, it said yeah. Bio. It's, yeah. It's it's probably just something to do with, you know, the the end was probably something to do with uh, with the, just us as a as a as a species of destroying our planet or something like that. Someone and tried to do something shock. technological, yeah, or, right? So yeah, here, but something. here's here's my theory now where. MK's power and all the and the abbots and where their power comes from. So they were cha- they were looking for him with. I, I'm, I'm gonna. It's it was a Geiger counter unless, unless, excuse me. They figured out a way to quantify the power within them and then track it. I mean that seems a little far fetched considering they are they're you know growing crops and fields and and have you know like plantations. But yeah, and they have old cars and everything. But I mean. I think maybe it had something to do with if it's radiation, it could be like a nuclear type of situation or something like that. Well, maybe they give up. Maybe yeah. they, ra- they, maybe they, they're radioactive. That's my point. But know? nothing, but nothing happens for no reason. Like you don't just, you don't just start radiating, have radiation, you know, be, I mean, we all have a little bit of radiation, but what I'm saying is whatever happened to the end of the world might've created these people. That's my point. My long-winded we, dumbass point. Sorry. <laughs> we we actually we actually get a look into that uh, when they turn the lights on, using their power. Yeah. So their power is obviously some sort of you electromagnetic know electromagnetic or, electromagnetic or yeah. maybe radiologists or radiologists. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Radioactive. Thank They're radiologists. <laughs> That's great. Hey, I need Mike the results. Talk, of my I can't talk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ronan, can you talk? Not yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, we're tired. But I mean, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so that's my theory. I think I think that those guys are tied into, and again, it's not a very far fetched theory. I mean, obviously, it's you know, it seems like they're tied into the that particular end of the world. And it's funny, I made a the comment. Epicenter. Or, yeah, I made a comment or a love reaction like, "Holy crap!" I I realized I I had forgotten that this is a post apocalyptic. Like something happened, and this is you know yeah. hundreds of years into the future. So. Yeah, so what the hell happened with that? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's uh, well, I'm sure we'll get a taste of it. And 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 honestly with with um them showing us Azra now on the cover of the magazine, that obviously clicks to MK that it is a real place. And I'm sure we'll see maybe not this season, but them on their way possibly next season to find To go it. find that. And and I'm going to tell you with everybody with Vale with y- Yeah, I'm I'm going to say if the show goes that direction where they're looking for the answers to the past, no one has mentioned it. Nobody cares. Nobody in this world even care like nobody's been like hey why don't we figure out what happened? Like, you know what I mean? Like I just finished playing the game horizon on PlayStation four. And that's what the whole thing was about. Like your character goes and tries to figure out what happened to this world. And why is it like this? But like you said, Mike, if they, if they, if they decide to go to, you know, to this city, to Azura, to go see, then it could lead them to a position being like, Oh my God, we need to figure this out. I think that would be really cool direction to bring this show maybe there, maybe there's still people there yeah broaden yeah, it yeah. broaden it broaden it because yeah. i you know this show gets picked up for a third season i think i think they're smart enough to broaden it and stop doing the 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 baron fights you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah so all right you want to move on are we good yeah speaking uh, of barons yeah quinn widow Vale. which what do we what are we oh, getting into first? yeah well i guess we decided just let's just throw them all together you know so so veil vale, obviously we, we spoke earlier veil vale, and yeah. and the widow and she's like i'll protect you i'll help you uh just show me where quinn is 
you know, tell me where he is. He does. They leave a message with Quinn. Come and talk to me. She she presents her, her idea of, you know, if we work together, we can take them out, and then we can kill each other or whatever the fuck. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, that sums it up pretty well. Well, it sums it up. The, the, the big point is I think you guys kind of think that um, the widow wasn't genuine in her protection of Vale. No, um, she wasn't. I think she was. I mean, I really think she was until she realized that Quinn was smart enough to realize that Waldo wasn't the one that found, you know, his bunker, that found Quinn's bunker. So by that, he obviously put two and two together. And that's how he realized that Vale was with her. Now, up until then, I think she was 100% uh, the widow with, with protecting Vale. But um, when it comes between Vale and possibly giving, you know, uh, getting her butterflies killed, uh, you know, then what is she going to choose? You know uh, what I mean? If that I don't, I don't... so important that she has to have it translated and she promises Vale she'll protect her, then you think think after him saying yeah give me a veil she'd be like i i don't know where a veil is no she came she did no she did that's what ticks me off of that she did she said i don't know what you're talking about and then that's when she said i can't give you a veil no but first she said i don't know what you're talking about then he said then quinn was quinn said waldo wasn't the one to find me and he put two and two together he's smarter than he looks that quinn's a a smart motherfucker man let's just put it that way quinn quinn's Quinn's great. He knows he knows what's up, man. He's yeah. not dumb. I mean, well, we'll who's to say Waldo didn't have access to Quinn's personal libraries or something like that? Yeah. I mean, she could she could have played it off a little bit better than that. But uh, what I what I find hilarious is that point. all these characters have all of these ties to each other that I have no recollection of. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I just don't have any recollection of it. I'm like, wait, when did? And then she? How is he? No. And then it's like, oh god. Yeah. Anyway. Well. But I mean, I, 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 you know, again, I, you turned, you, you, you turned real quick. Like she turned real quick because she doesn't care about Vale. Vale, listen, Vale was not part yeah. of her plan. Vale was yeah. a means to an end. Vale was an easy way to get to Quinn's place and that's it. And hey, oh, could you, could you do that while you're here? You know, yeah. decipher this while you're here. Otherwise, you know, I, I honestly don't think she had any she no. wasn't gonna keep her no she wasn't gonna she was using it was the perfect bargaining chip to get yeah. yep. uh, you know possibly possibly yeah. um but anyway yeah so so we so that's what we got so apparently they're going to uh so Vale goes back to Quinn Vale yeah. and Henry go back to Quinn and Quinn and the and the widow are now going to you know set off and do that which is which is a good build up I'm, I'm looking forward to it because um, yep. the, they're two, they're two, they're two good characters, you know, and it's good to see them like that. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. I want to see them fight again. Remember when they fought in the first season? I want to see them. I want to see again. Quinn sure. stop being so creepy. That that would be well. I think that adds just, to him. We mentioned it, it adds to him, yeah. but like pull the creep factor back just just a tad. It could just be a, a li- it could be getting a little too much with his little bleh, 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 and like you know leaning in and being all quiet. Like it could start to get. On my nerves. Well, hey, who was more of a creep this episode? Oh yeah, uh, Quinn. Quinn or Sunny? Or Sunny. Well, Sunny Quinn. was a bit of a creep watching <laughs> watching the the whore and the whore's child sleep while Sleeping, they were. Right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he was there just to kind of protect them. I'm assuming, yeah. or yeah. you know, but uh, I know, you know she so has a name. Her name is Portia. I was just being a dick. I'm Portia, sorry. yes. So Sunny and 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 Beji, You know, what are, what are yeah. we going to say about that, fellas? During the fight, and we. We see that um, you know this is not the first time that Beiji comes in and kind of saves the day in a way, but this is the first time that we actually see him use some kind of physical attribute, and we get his <laughs> former uh, his former position Brother, as yeah. an abbot. Yeah, he was an abbot. Now let me ask you this, guys: Did did you having Beiji rush in these past five episodes before mm. pre, you know this episode? And save the day and, and do all these kind of things. Did it ever strike you that, oh, this is a guy that knows wow. some stuff? Not that he was an abbot, of course, but to well, me, I was always like, that. yeah. Like we he, spoke about that in other, in other yeah, episodes. Yeah, that's, that's true, yeah. So, you I know. Mean, he that he said wasn't just he like knows stuff. Yeah. 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 Remember, remember, I mean, I'm sure I said We've, it. You said it, yeah. We've said multiple times, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, he, so he's it, not just the comic relief or the or the the funny guy yeah, of the the yeah. group. Yeah, we might have first said that when he chopped off Nathaniel's right, Nathaniel. Yeah, Nathaniel. yeah. Nathaniel. his Nathaniel. hand, his arm, yeah. Yeah, his hand. He's so. just really good at throwing things, man. <laughs> yeah, he's through, and driving trucks through walls, and driving Wait, trucks through and, walls. Yeah. You so think I mean, he's a little unbelievable as. Uh, yeah. A little, no, little. no. I got I got two points here that make it very believable. One, he was so sincere when he was asking Sonny to not go, yeah. to not go after him. And it was, it gave off the very sincere vibe. And it killed me to give me, to give the rating that I gave, you know, the acting and stuff this time around because of those kind of scenes there. And then when he's fighting, um, when, when the guy's like, oh, you're rusty. And then you see in the background, because it, it switches to Sonny, I think it is, and you see him like go after him in a bear hug. Yeah, he just he just tackles just... him. Like, yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> I like, thought the same uh, thing, man. Yeah, it, it's it's good on a level that's not you know action hero. It's I I enjoy Nick Frost playing that character. Don't forget in the promo we get to see we see him fight two people at once when he's got like sticks or something in his hand and he's yeah. fighting two people. So obviously, so now the cat's out of the proverbial bag, right? Um, yeah. You know, Beji can fight. We know he used to, he used to be an abbot. He used to have power. The guy says, you don't have power anymore. He's like, no, I don't, but, but I know how to do this. Yeah. So yeah, um, the I, Vulcan neck bench. I like it. I like it. I like that. He's not just some dude. I'm like that. I like that. They're giving him some backstory. So he, yeah. it, you know, obviously, I think we all kind of saw it coming, but it's still a cool twist. It's still a cool little, you know, thing. Um, yeah, I still, I still think that um, he, you know, I believe that that Baji has the has some ability. I still don't think that it's it's um, we're gonna see so much fighting out of him because look at look at because when when that main Abbott was was standing there after Baji did the old stun move there. He was even telling him, Sonny, get up. You got to beat this guy, you know, before. So I don't, I, you know, did he lose his power from how much? Was he a thinner dude? And now he just like gave himself up and you know what I mean? So I don't think that we're still going to get crazy fight scenes with him. I still think that um, he's going to need Sonny for sure. But, yeah. uh, you know, that, that was my probably one of my biggest gripes is that he just really was. It's hard to believe him to be a fighter just by his physical Mm -hmm. appearance i don't want that to sound bad because yeah. you know but but realistically it's also you know nick frost you know him yeah. you know the characters yeah. he's it's playing yeah. yeah you know that stuff he's done he's done physical stuff before like he's he's yeah. been in fights in movies and stuff before he's played a cop he's played you know in the in uh, shawn of the dead you know what i mean like yeah yeah. So uh, I didn't mean he played a cop in Shaun of the Dead. I meant in Hot Fuzz he played a cop and then yeah. in Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, man. And it, it's fun. It's fun. And and I think they're gonna keep it to a minimum. Yeah. Uh, you know, not. It, it was. It was. It was a, a, a middle of the road episode. We did get some cool things. And to kind of finish this up with the with uh, the fight scene, the Christmas fight scene with everybody after Christmas fight um, scene, we yeah. see, yeah, we see Ava being killed, and she saves the day with her last move before she dies, and you know, we uh, we see the the punches of death, these chest punches that fist Sonny, of the North Stars, him, yeah, man, yeah, that sucks. So, you know, after after all was said and done, and that that cool slicing of that that main Abbot there of his head and that kind of looked cool how it first you know sunk yeah. down but um obviously sunny took some took some big punches and it looked like he had uh, probably not a heart attack but maybe they broke bones in his chest or something and it's his, his, no, his lungs more were collapsing I think or it's something more than that, yeah. But, yeah but jesse hold up jesse what was your theory before you knew that i i still think uh that maybe maybe some for some reason the Abbott was uh, thinking, you know what? If he can beat me, then just transfer the power. I mean, we don't know how the power works. But he didn't really beat him. He got stunned by Beji, and then he... I mean, it wouldn't it be better for his power to live on than for her to die? No, I agree with you. I would love I would love it if Sonny had that power. But I we'll mean, have to wait and see, you know? But then he'd I, I kind of hope probably, that's what it is. They'd probably have to go through a whole training process again then. So if Sonny did absorb these powers, well, Sonny's would a you fucking, want to see no, him? No, Sonny's a clipper, man. He doesn't need that I don't shit. Know. I think it's cool. I think that's kind of 
what what's cool about the show is that even though Sonny is like fucking badass, there are people that there are, are people that are him. yeah better than him. Yeah, there are people that have crazy abilities. Um, you know, maybe Sonny will gain some kind of super power, super strength kind of a yeah. thing. But I think that, like I said earlier, I think I think MK is the main guy. In a way, not necessarily the main, but the the maybe the linchpin to to, to that the overall child, that, that yeah. super fighter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So until he uh, uh, gains his ability back, I guess we'll see. But um, you know, I'm we're in- missing something obvious. What's you, that? you just reminded me of it randomly. Nick Frost, Beji, is now right there. He, he's an ex Abbott. You got MK there. True. If if Sonny does have powers now, he can train both MK and Sonny to use their powers. At least train one of them. I can see that happening. Yeah, I can see him training Sonny. I mean, uh, training MK for sure. Yeah. Let's see. Will that be a little out of control seeing Beiji training? And, uh, I don't know. Let's let's go to the first scene when Beiji jumps across the thing and does some fucking kung fu kick. And it might be a little too... You know, unbelievable with the way it looks, but who knows? That's a cool idea, though. I can obviously uh, agree with that. With with that, you know. Um, yeah. Guys, I got I've got two little quick things I just want to comment on here. One is that this power of theirs, yeah. You know, at first it was mysterious and stuff, but now it's just like, oh, we can fucking just take it away willy nilly, and people can yeah. get it and take it away. It's like what? It's it's taking the little the like a little bit of the mysticism out of it. The fact that it can be just be taken away, it's kind of. I was just thinking about that, and I'm like, it's kind of cheesy a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously we'll see what where it goes with that, but it's like, oh yeah, you're powerful. So not only do we find out that tons of people have this power, that it could be taken away, like. It just kind of dawned on me, like that's kind of shitty. That's kind of well, dumb. Well, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Like when um, the 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 master, the the abbot there, told Beiji, you you know, you lost your gift. It just, you know, what? can they get it back? Like you guys are saying, right? Is but this is what I'm saying. Can they gain it back? But we never, we didn't really see MK lose it or get it taken away. But that, right? Okay, but but MK aside, think about it. That's why I'm saying like this is this is definitely tied into what happened. In the past, because the media, yeah. there's a this is a it's a it's a, a large yeah. group of people that have it. They're like mutants to me. You understand? Yeah. So it's like it's yeah. like the mutant gene. Like it's just random people have it, and then they now they got together so they can train Fucking on how to use it. Chernobyl or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like so, it's mm-hmm. it to me for for me. I think it's kind of taken the mysticism out of this thing. Not that yeah. it's any less interesting, but now I see it as a different thing. Okay, yeah. why do all these people have this stuff? Anyway, sure. I digress. I, don't, I mean, we could save that for right. another. Um, just go ahead. Well, we're forgetting one thing. Yeah. The Geiger counter still works on both MK and Beiji. Therefore, they still do have their powers. They're just suppressed. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. There we go. I absolutely agree. Because, they, yeah, they search for Beiji. And we, and we, we didn't mention that, that previous, but that, yeah. was a, that was an easy easy identifier that Beiji was. And obviously, they, they didn't try and hide it too, too well anyway. You know, they weren't trying to be nah. sneaky he was like oh i can't talk about it like you really can i really can't anyway uh the last thing i just wanted to throw out there for us um and this is for the three of us um isn't it cool to be kind of like watching something that we don't actually know what's going to happen because we're do yeah. we talk game of thrones we talk the walking dead you know it's just and i know we haven't done fear in months now but for me for some reason i just i was just thinking like oh my god we actually don't know how this is gonna play out yeah. Whereas The Walking Dead were so we were so you know we just did our Q and A and talking yeah. about the comics of Game of Thrones we just we just did our uh, uh, Game of Thrones video promo images and it's like we're discussing the the book and this and it's like it's kind of nice to not know what's happening and have a whole new like stable of characters it's just it's refreshing yeah. and I was like it's cool yeah. that we're doing it that we can you know and I, I like it it's it's cool because it's something that Definitely. hasn't come before you know. Anyway, yeah. that's all I wanted to say. So I think I think I think with that, right? What do you say? Wrap it up. Yeah, Mikey, why don't you tell us uh, um, where they can uh, you know get they to us? They can find us. They can always find us on all the social medias, of course, on YouTube at Third Person Pod. But don't forget, we're on iTunes. Check that out. 
Give us some reviews on there. We enjoyed uh, enjoy hearing from you guys, all the comments. Don't forget Facebook, of course, Third Person Pod, and Instagram. We're always putting up some cool stuff on there, cool images, and obviously give you um, all the heads up on, on our videos that are that are just posted. So check that out. We, we love hearing from you guys. We love reading your comments, so don't forget to do that. Absolutely. And uh, don't forget, to, if uh, like we mentioned, go check out the live reaction in the review if you guys haven't. And don't forget yes. to leave the comments down there. And uh, right there below my picture, there is this thing that says Comic Blitz. Go there, third person pod, promo code. We normally say it. Three months, three bucks, dollar a month. There you go. And, and we have not one, but two Game of Thrones videos coming out this week. As Mike mentioned, we do have a promo image uh, video coming out soon, very soon. Uh, might already be up, as a matter of fact. And Thursday, the 27th, we get uh, we get a Game of Thrones houses video. Well, you guys and, get. We're giving. Yeah, you, you guys, guys get. Well, yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise! Two of the people aren't on there. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll find out who's who and what's what then. Right. But there you go. All right, guys. That's gonna do it. Thank you for watching this discussion of Into the Badlands season two, episode six. The uh, leopard stalks in snow. There's no button there. They just go right into the leopard. Guys, thank you so much. We appreciate everything that you do for us and checking us out. And we will see you guys on the next discussion. So, peace.